Hello, today I want to talk to you guys about the ugly stage. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? That ugly stage where your painting just kind of looks blah. And when you get to the middle stage, sometimes you feel like you've been working on it forever and it's just not coming together and you're just like meh, 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 meh. So today I want to give you 10 tips on how to get your painting out of that ugly stage and into a beautiful place where it's ready to be framed. Let's get started. It's hard for me to be serious. Okay, tip number one is add some lights. Usually I think maybe eight times out of 10, the reason why a painting is in an ugly stage is because it has too many medium tones. It's just kind of blah. There's no pizzazz in it. There's not good contrast there. Um, it's just hasn't been fully developed yet. It just needs a little bit extra, just keep going. So one of the ways you can do that is add some lights, add some light highlights. You can do that by using a scrubber brush and um, scrubbing back to some lighter areas in your painting, or you can use a gel pen to add some white highlights, like some whiskers or a glint in the eye, like if you're working on a cat or a dog or some other furry, friendly beast and you can acrylic you can use white paint um, this certainly doesn't need to be a video just about watercolor painting most of these tips will apply no matter what medium you're using so add some highlights add some lighter areas or if possible some white area too that brings us to my next tip which is kind of the opposite of adding whites, which is add some darks. Find places in your work where maybe you could get it even darker. And the idea behind all this is to add more contrast. The human eye likes to see contrast. Lights and darks help to add that. So add some darks to your painting. And you might be working from a reference photo that doesn't provide these um, these contrasts for you if you're working from a reference photo that doesn't have good light or maybe there was a flash it might be too washed out it might not have good examples of lights and darks and especially when i'm doing a commission and i'm painting from a reference photo that i've been given i haven't been able to choose a good reference photo i have to work from what i i am given um, sometimes the light is just really bad in the reference photo so that might be why you're painting is not looking good. So what you want to do in that circumstance, what I do is I go look on the internet for similar images. Say it's a Siamese cat. I'll go look for a Siamese cat in better light with better contrasts. And I will try to transfer some of those lights and um, tonal values to my own painting. You, you try to find a Siamese cat or whatever the animal is in the same position in better light so you can see where the lights and darks would be if your reference photo would have been taken in a better um, light lighting situation so that's something i commonly do okay my third tip is to add contrast and that's kind of similar but you can think in terms of contrast as not just black and white but you can think of texture you can think of complementary colors is your painting too bright? Are there too many colorful colors and it's overwhelming the eyes? Maybe you need to add some grays that are contrasting to the bright colors. If it's too light of a painting, maybe you need to add some darks. So think also in terms of contrast. What could you add um, to a painting to make the main subject pop out? And I've noticed this a lot in my watercolor painting groups that I'm on on Facebook. A lot of beginners will post a white dog with a very, very light blue background, for example, and they're like, what can I do to improve it? One of the main things that it needs is a darker background for like a light dog or a light background for a dark animal. Okay, here is kind of the opposite problem. You, your painting might be a little overworked and it might have too many elements. You've put too many details in and it's looking too busy. What you can do when that happens is you can go in with a scrubber brush and soften some passages 
parts of some passages, like a lot of times it's the background that needs to be softened down. You can take a wet brush in watercolor and wash over the entire painting with wet water to kind of just soften everything. Uh, you might just need to soften one area of the painting. You might need to uh, push the background back. Like I had a painting I recently did of a white mare and I've put the, a couple videos up now of that painting and the background became too busy and it was taking too much attention away from the white horse. So what I ended up doing at the very end to really make the mare pop out more was I went behind her in the background and I put a couple washes of blues and greens to kind of one, calm down the background and two, push the background back. Okay, so the opposite problem might be that your painting is a little too blah, a, too, a little bit too boring. Maybe you need to add some texture sh somewhere. Let me give you an example. I was working on this painting and I got to what I might call the middle stage. And this is only 80% done, by the way, this isn't done. I need to put in more darks. See, this is kind of almost in the ugly stage because it needs more darks now to really pop out some of these boats. I'm gonna put more darks in the um, water. But the problem I was having with the background is the background itself reached an ugly stage and it was all kind of soft, hazy, light. There was no shape to it, no depth. So one thing I did was I added these trees that are um, burnt sienna, which is a very different color than mostly green surrounding them. So that helped. And then I dry brushed in the bark so there's some texture. So that added some contrasting texture to all this soft, light, airiness back in here. And then I also pushed these trees back. I made them darker and I added some ultramarine blue to push them back and to just create depth in the painting. Another thing that you can do is to add a few interesting elements if your painting is a little blah. The classic thing to do for landscape artists is to add a couple flying birds in the background. and. It's time-tested trick. It really livens up a painting. I don't know what it is about adding those birds, but it sure does it. In a cat portrait, it's adding whiskers. In a horse portrait, it might be adding some halter details. In one of my videos about painting horses, I call it adding jewelry. You're just adding jewelry, um, little tiny bits of pretty little details um, to add interest. And just like jewelry, you don't want to add too much. You want to add just enough to be interesting. And then if you go overboard, then it looks overwhelming to the eye, just like real jewelry in real life. <laughs> so tip number eight is just chop the sucker up. If you don't like how your painting's looking and somehow it's blah, maybe you need to crop out the blah part. And I was seriously considering maybe I would do this with this painting because I was really scared of this background and sure enough if you follow me on Patreon you know I painted this once panicked sprayed it all off oh my gosh I was like oh no I knew it wasn't working I was so panicked okay my tip number nine was going to be soften or scrub out areas and I kind of already talked about that but I will demonstrate it to you with this actual painting because that is exactly what I did with this painting. When I first painted this, this, and this isn't done like I said, but I was so excited about this painting because I wanted to splash around in this area. You know I just wanted to fling paint and make it really splashy so I did that and you guys, you know what? It looks so bad. <laughs> it didn't look good. And so I was like, no. And so I took this spray bottle and I sprayed it all off while it was still wet. And then what was left was this soft, ethereal, um, there's still colors, but it's really soft. And I was like, oh, that looks better already. So just by softening the background, it looked 10 times better, unfortunately. This is just not the painting to splash around in right here because then it takes away from all the tons of stuff going on in the painting down here. And this is really the area of interest, these boats. So to make this too busy and um, interesting actually weakens the painting. So I had to soften it and it, it really does. It looks so much better. And then after that, I went back in and added some more texture. The next thing that you can do to help 
your painting be more interesting and get it out of that ugly stage is to look for opportunities to create depth. Now, if you're doing just a portrait where it's the head down like of a cat or a dog, you can maybe push the background back or maybe put something interesting way back in the background, really a soft, interesting window or something to create depth. You can do that if it works for a composition. Sometimes it won't work. I did that with this painting too. And uh, this painting went through a huge ugly stage, like I said, and it was mostly in this area. And one of the things that I did to help strengthen this area is I created depth. How did I do that? Let me get closer. So the first thing I did was I splashed in this branch and you see how there is some texture and this branch is coming forward. And so it has more texture and I made it a warmer color. This is a very warm, vibrant, um, saturated green, which helps something come forward and it's pointing into the painting also. So that helps with that part of the composition. So that creates some depth because this looks like this branch is very close to the viewer. And then it's overlapping this tree. And then this branch is overlapping this tree. And then this tree right here is a darker brown. It's a cooler color, which helps push it back. And all these trees are kind of pointing you over and um, down to the bridge. You see how I made a lot of branches kind of point the eye that way. I can use this painting to also illustrate my next uh, tip, which is to find ways to use pattern to create interest. The human mind likes to find areas of pattern that creates a, a cohesive whole. So in a painting, if you can find things to repeat as in a pattern, that will oftentimes, not always, but it can really help make your painting stronger. What I did to use pattern was, is I'm, this area right here, this grass that's right up against the boats, I think is a bit blah and it needs something. So what I'm gonna do and what's in the reference photo already, fortunately, are some old fence posts. So fence post, fence post, fence post, fence post, fence post, and they'll recede into the back of the painting and that will create depth, but will, it will also create a pattern. So, and a lot of landscape painters do use fence posts to create pattern. And what they do is instead of making them up straight up and down and perfect and all matchy matchy, is they make them, um, one will be pointing this way and then one's that way, like it's an old fence. And indeed, that's what I'm gonna do with this painting, but it'll create a bit of a pattern to help the, the um, eye travel through the painting. Okay, you guys, I hope you found that to be a helpful tutorial. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And please leave me comments, like this video, subscribe. I upload videos once to twice a week. And I would love that if you would help my YouTube channel get more recognized by the YouTube algorithm by watching my videos to the end and liking them and commenting on them and subscribing. I really appreciate it and it means the world to me to have your support and thank you so much for coming and watching this video and if you'd like to learn more in depth from me, you know the spiel. I've got my Patreon. There's more information in the description below. I hope you guys are having a great day and I'll see you soon. Bye guys.